What's up, UXers? Sophia here, and I just wanted to give you guys a little tour of BBC Food. And what we're specifically going to be looking at with BBC Food is their contextual navigation, how they have made very clear they've done a great job of integrating lots of different types of objects within the BBC Food experience. And they've done a almost perfect job of actually connecting them all. So we're going to see what they're doing right and also look at how they could potentially do a little bit better. So um, let's just identify the objects. And this is pretty, they've made it pretty easy by you can just look across the top um, to see what the objects are. So we have recipes, chefs, stories, diets, programs, and techniques. And this is often, just as a side note, this is often how I start thinking about my main navigation is actually by object. So you have your main objects across the top and it goes to those main list pages. Um, then users can dive in from the list page into the detail page. And then ideally there is a crap ton of cross-linking from detail page to detail page based on those real world relationships. So you can see they've actually done it on the main, main navigation for the BBC. It's by category and instead of by uh, object, which is okay. So it's those are kind of the two main ways that I like to build main navigation, either by category, which kind of takes you to a landing page of all the different types of objects, for that particular category, um, or actually dividing it out by object. I really, I don't like seeing navigation that mixes in actions, um, and uh, especially ones that have actions and objects. You really want to stick with either nouns uh, or verbs, usually not the verbs, nouns, or if you think about the categories, it's almost like the adjectives. So, okay, side note. So let's talk about meatballs. All right. So if we're starting here on meatballs, actually, let's go over to programs. So if we click over to programs, you get these kind of sections for each episode. So you can see the episode and, um, and then you can see the recipes associated with that episode, which is very cool. So going down here, um, the, this, uh, Harry Biker episode, they had a ton of recipes, but we can click here on Moorish meatballs. So then we go to the recipe and it does click back to the Harry Bikers, but it actually doesn't click back to that page. I don't think it clicks back to this detail page. Um, so we get a little bit about the Harry Bikers and we see more recipes here. And where are those meatballs? Strangely. Um, another kind of weird thing is if I wanted to get to that detail page that I just saw, uh, I actually don't think I can get it to it from here. So to get to that detail page with all the recipes for Harry Bikers, um, I kind of had to go this circuitous route of going to the recipe and then actually clicking on the byline of the recipe to get to that detail page that was within BBC Food. So if I click Let's see. I think that this actually takes me to the episode. Yeah, it takes me to the episode um, where this is sort of a different domain. Um, we're no longer in BBC Food anymore. So our contextual navigation breaks quite a bit. I don't get those recipes anymore. So I'm kind of like on a different, I'm on the episode detail page versus BBC Food's program detail page. So there's definitely some funky things going on here where I click on programs and I really would expect to see a list of programs where I would, would get to those detail pages. Um, but instead, I see recipes. And then if I actually click on the episode, let's, what did I click on before this one? Let's click on this one. I think it's still going to. Interesting. So that took me to two. Okay, strange. So this one takes me to this detail page for the episode. So now we have what I call a shapeshifter here. We have two different detail pages for the same thing, which is kind of confusing for people. Like, which one should I be looking at? Um, how are they different? So here, this one I like a little bit more because it's pulling in that contextual navigation. So I have... Um, and when I say contextual navigation, all I mean is navigating through the content. So it's object to object versus what 
this is not our contextual navigation. This is our static, global, persistent navigation. Basically, everything else is that contextual navigation where I'm actually navigating through that related, relevant content. So this is contextual navigation here. So I'm on an episode. I see the recipes from the episode, and then I see the related chefs. So I guess that's what I ended up on. So what happened is this is the chef detail page, not the program detail page. And I'm really having to use my deductive reasoning to figure that out. So um, yeah, so let's go back here. Let's stay on track. Um, so if I stick with um, stick with the plan of going to Moorish Meatballs, um, amazingly, so they you can go to a chef detail page. That's awesome. And amazingly, the ingredients are actually objects as well. So that they don't list them here. They actually do have, well, there is a, um, a, a main list page for ingredients. It's not in that main navigation. It's in kind of this sub nav here. Um, dishes as well as another object, which is different than recipes. So, and we'll get into that in a second, um, the difference between recipes and dishes. So if I, let's say I click on paprika here. Um, I've got some, for some reason, I have a ton of paprika. I need some more paprika recipes. So I go to paprika and I see all the recipes for paprika. Actually, I see featured ones and then I can go and I can see all of them. Oh my gosh. That's, this is amazing. Um, and if I scroll down here, I get a buyer's guide for paprika. I get like some kind of history and preparation, um, tips on paprika. I get varieties of paprika and then I get other spices. So basically like other ingredients in this category, which is, I mean, this is insane that they've done this. This is like, it's absolutely incredible. So let's click on, uh, cayenne and from cayenne. Now I get what I would exactly what I would spec expect more recipes. I get other spices. Um, I don't get any varieties of cayenne. Um, so let's click on this beef burritos. So I click on beef burritos and when I get here, I can see related recipes, which is kind of a no brainer that I would see that. Um, I also see that this recipe is from this particular episode on a show. Um, but it's not that clear that this is what that is. I think that this is an episode take on the takeaway. Um, so I can, of course I can click to the chef, but let's actually click through here and see what happens. This is a show, is this a show detail page? See, I don't actually know what I'm looking at right now. I think I'm looking at a show detail page because here's all the episodes, but it's the same picture. So this is where it's like, They've done such a good job of connecting these things, but then sometimes it's not it's not quite clear what the things are. Um, really, the whole system works really well, and then it's trying to kind of interface with programs and episodes, and I understand the challenge there because it's kind of like, I think they're probably pulling in data from a different part of BBC and trying to recreate it. So I'm guessing this is probably siloed teams. There's probably a BBC food team maybe, and they're trying to integrate with like the BBC TV uh, media team, and they're having to kind of recreate some of these detail pages. So this, I'm guessing, is probably not the only detail page for Take on the Takeaway. Um, there's probably, at one, like what we were seeing with Harry, Harry chefs, Harry motorcyclist chefs, <laughs> something like that, um, where we were seeing those two detail pages. So there's some funky stuff there. Okay, let's uh, let's look at some more examples of where this whole system kind of breaks down. And actually, time out for a second. I want to show you guys a uh, a system model of this. We actually did build a system model. So hang on and let me pull that up. Okay, so here's the system model um, that we built to basically reverse engineer BBC Food. Um, so we have our all of our objects, um, recipe, uh, dish. So let's let's get into recipe and dish. Um, so just take a look at this. Pause your video if you need to to kind of absorb this. But this is how the BBC is working, and the orange lines here are connections that actually aren't there. So connections that should be there, but that are a little bit broken. And the the most egregious ones, I think personally, are the ones where it goes one way but not back the other way. Um, 
Okay, so take a look at this. Pause it if you need to kind of absorb it. But this is what I call a system model. And it basically models out those those real world objects and all the relationships between it, which is really where a user starts to understand an environment. So if you're not making this clear in your user experience design, nothing's gonna be clear. And to make it clear in your user experience design, first you gotta make it clear to yourself and your team. And one of the best ways to start is to build a model like this. Okay, so let's talk about if bread is bad for us. So um, how I got here is I clicked on stories and browse the stories and I ended up with this story is bread bad for you and what you see here is a little bit of a of an article and they, I mean somebody spent some time on this um we actually have some techniques brought in here so this is again it's not really clear that this is a technique object but it's giving you how to make sourdough and I'm probably I'm pretty sure if we went under techniques we would find that technique over there as well um, and then with bread I can see there's how to make bread there's gluten-free bread and all of these, this is what I would call masked objects. So this, I believe, is a is a um, a dish. So basically, a dish being a recipe category. Um, but this is a, pretty sure is an article. Um, this might even be a program. Um, so let's actually click on these. So we can see they look all look exactly the same. So let's click. And I really, I didn't want to get into masked modules, but I can't help myself. Um, I really wanted to focus on just those, um, that contextual navigation, but isn't that a beautiful light? I was obviously looking at that light earlier today. Okay, so this is another article, and that's going to probably be an article. I'm just guessing it, guessing it. I'm assuming based on the title, um, but I'm really, I'm having to use deductive reasoning, which we don't want our users to have to use deductive reasoning. Um, Gluten-free bread. So this is going to be one of those dish. Oh, is it a dish or is it a collection? So then there's, this is also, these are two objects that can kind of blur between the lines. Um, is apple pie, is that a dish or is it a collection of recipes around apple pie? So um, this is, we have uh, four recipes here for gluten-free bread. Um, but it says it's under collections, but let's just go over to dishes. Is gluten-free bread in here? Let's just see. No, it's not. But to just jump in, let's see garlic bread. So if we go to garlic bread, oh, it looks so good. Um, look how similar this page is. It's pretty much exactly the same thing as the collection page. So now the user is like, and even if they're not thinking about this at, uh, consciously, basically this is at the back of the brain. This is the, there's this like tacit thinking. What's the difference between a dish and a collection? Um, so when you have two things that are very similar, but they're called different things and maybe like something could be in a garlic bread could be a dish or a collection. What you're doing is you're creating cognitive dissonance and you're creating what's um, the, the cognitive term is the Zigarnik effect. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Where basically you're creating an open loop. And even if it's a tiny open loop in the user's brain, you're really what, what's happening is you're creating a background process. So they're thinking about that. Part of the brain is being used to be thinking about all these tiny little things that are not 100% clear. And when it comes to objects and their relationships, like you just want it to be 100% clear. What are the things? How are the things connected? There should be no guesswork and no assumptions about that. So, okay. So let's um, let's get back on track here and go back to our um, our gluten free. Where were we? Gluten free bread. Okay. So the point that I was trying to make here before I made like six other points um, was how. This article about is bread bad for you that links to a collection for gluten-free bread. Um, it links to, oh gosh, I have to see, is this a technique? How to make bread. How to make bread is a collection, but <laughs> what about in techniques? Is there a how to make bread technique? Oh my goodness. And we're gonna get over to these in a few minutes too. Um, let's just see. 
how to knead bread dough, how to make bread crumbs. So interesting. So this is what the technique detail page looks like. So is that collection that we were looking at on how to make bread, these are recipes and not techniques. So another thing we're like a technique versus a recipe. Um, yeah, this seems like to be a collection. So we have our, um, our article and we have collections along the side mixed with articles and then some collections that could be a dish and some collections that could be a technique. Now, the most egregious thing about this is this article doesn't connect to the most obvious object that it should connect to. And what is that? If we're looking at the objects across the top. What object should this connect to? The diet, right? So this is obviously about the gluten-free diet, right? Or maybe a paleo diet or a low carb diet. And they have this whole section for diets here. And when you, and then oh, they do this thing where they, you click on diets and the first thing you see is articles. <laughs> you have to scroll down to see diets. So programs sort of does the same thing. I click on programs and I see episodes, not programs. I click on diets and I see articles, not diets. I click, have to scroll down to see the diets. I would love it if I click on diets and I just see this. Just show me the diets. Um, so another side rant. So we do have here, we have a whole gluten-free um, diet uh, object, and it should probably be connected to that article about is bread bad for you? And if I click on gluten-free here, um, I get these dishes? Are these dishes or collections? I don't know. Is gluten-free pizza a dish or a collection? I couldn't really tell you. Um, gluten-free kids party, that's probably a collection. We have the gluten-free bread collection. Um, and then we do have that article. So basically we have that one-way connection. So the diet connects to the article, but the article doesn't connect back to the diet. Okay. All right, let's look at one more where things kind of break down here. So mango pie, does that not look amazing? Um, so it is the Indian take on a traditional Thanksgiving pie. Oh my gosh. Um, okay, how is this not five stars? Anyways, focus. So if I'm looking here and let's say I am making this and how much mango is required here? Uh, da, 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 da. Mango pulp. Okay, so let's say it's making, it's um, just requiring mango pulp, but let's say I'm making my own mango pulp and I'm having problems cutting up the mango, okay? So I click on mango and there's this amazing mango detail page, which is just so freaking cool. Um, I just love how they've made ingredients and object. Like I can't imagine the level of effort that that took, but it's just, it's so high value, right? To be able to say, let me look at mango and I've got a bunch of mangoes. Let me see all those mango recipes. Um, just very cool. So when I click through here on mango, I've got a buyer's guide. I've got preparation and, but the preparation does this content here doesn't really help me, um, uh, determine how to how to cut the mango right it's not really helping me with that um, I have parts of the mango typically made with mango other exotic fruits like this page is just wows me but one thing that it doesn't have it, what they haven't done is they haven't connected the ingredient to the technique okay so if I go over here to techniques Look at that, how to cut mango. So there actually is, they have created content here on how to create, on how to cut mango, but it's totally disconnected um, from the mango detail page. And let's just see. So if I go back here and I go to mango recipes, let's look at a mango recipe where I'm pretty sure I'm going to need chopped mango instead of that mango puree, like chilled fresh fruit salad. Um, that's got mango. It's got the method recipe tips. And does it tell me how to chop mango? So again, that that piece of content that they've created is not, there's no contextual nav there to take me to that great piece of content um, from the mango recipes. Okay. One more. Let's talk about lemon zest. So going back to techniques, there's this technique on grating lemon zest. And if we play it, let me actually turn my sound off. If we play it here, um, 
we have this lovely lady telling us how to great lemon. And let's say we just kind of fall in love with her and we're like, this woman is amazing. What else can she teach me? So I scroll down here and it says, add citrus zing to cakes, biscuits, and souffles with Mary Berry. Now there's no Mary Berry module here. There's no navigation over to Mary Berry. So as a user who's not on BBC food very often, and I don't watch BBC, I'm going to kind of assume that she's a nobody, that she's like, I mean, you would bring, you would link it if there's a, there's a whole section for chefs, right? So I'm guessing there's like chef detail pages. I've already seen a few. I'm going to assume like there's probably no detail page for Mary Berry. Um, or if I did want to find out more about Mary Berry, instead of connecting her here, um, maybe I, I say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to just see if she's over there. And there she is. So there is this wonderful detail page for Mary Berry. And I mean, what a name for a just adorable British chef, Mary Berry. That's great. But there's all of her recipes by Mary Berry, programs with Mary Berry. Um, but this technique that she was showing, um, which is could be, I mean, this is amazing for SEO. Like I Google how to cut mango. BBC can pull me in through that. But these pages are kind of dead ends. They're not they're not, um, they're not kind of dead ends. They are dead ends. Um, they're not actually showing me recipes that are associated with it. What about this one? Okay. So this one is showing recipes using this technique. So, um, but it's definitely not showing, uh, maybe this doesn't have like a specific person showing, but if there was a chef involved in showing that, how that technique, um, is supposed to work, which these could just be clips from episodes, right? Um, it could also connect back to the episode. So maybe I am, I am watching this how to cook spinach and this is from some episode. It can actually connect me to that episode and maybe I go and watch the whole episode. So a lot of these connections that are natural there are actually not, um, uh, actually developed into this. So, um, in the article, there's an article that talks about this a little bit more. Um, I've sort of taken another look at it through the video, but the article will be linked, um, in the description. And I talk a little bit about why this is happening. And I want to just say that the designers at the BBC have done an amazing job here. Like this is like, it's one of the best examples of contextual navigation out there that I've seen. And, um, and I really do want to highlight that. And probably the, um, the domain model, because I do know that BBC, the reason that they've been so successful with this is because of the work of Mike Atherton and his team back in like the 2010 era, um, where they were practicing all of this domain modeling and they were modeling these different areas of BBC and then actually building based on these models. This is my model reverse engineered, but I'm guessing that Mike and his team probably had some sort of model like this and we're connecting these things. And it's just a real challenge to actually implement all of this. You know, you've got to have a really strong uh, team of developers that are building that relational database. You also have to, um, you also have to build a really smart CMS content management system that is connecting all of these things. And then you have to have trained content creators and governance around that and rules. And you've made it super easy for them and straightforward to actually tag all this content when it does need to be done manually. If the system isn't um, sophisticated enough to be doing it automatically, you actually have to have people do this. So the amount of work that they have done, that probably a lot of this was manual tagging and manually connecting of these different instances of objects is amazing. So I do want to end on that note and say kudos to the BBC team, because this is just, it's really a beautiful experience. So Hope you guys learned uh, a lot about connecting through contextual navigation, making that your primary source of navigation. I will also say there is, there's nothing intuitive about navigating a bunch of static links. The most intuitive way for people to navigate, especially when they're exploring and they're learning and they're trying to um, discover new content is through those relationships, through those real world relationships. So happy UXing, and I hope you learned a lot. Also, feel free to put anything in the comments, any questions um, or other good examples. That would be amazing. If you have other good examples of contextual navigation done right or done incorrectly, please put that in the comments. I want to know all about that.